We're coming back for our Football 101 with Steve Morrison breaking down the Michigan-Penn State game. And Steve, on this very first series, Michigan defense sets the tone with a sack, then they snuff out a screen pass, and they get a a second sack on third and 12. Take us through the second sack by Chris Wormley. Well, it's like you said, it's a nice job. We've got them pinned back, and the thing you want to do is keep them down there and make it a a difficult situation for them to punt. And the great thing about this is it's just a simple four-man rush. They're they're not blitzing. They're not running any games. It's just two strong uh, edge rushes by Charlton and Wormley and uh, able to corral the quarterback up, make him move his feet a little bit, and then ultimately able to get the sack, almost getting a a safety to start the game. But a, a great way for the defense to go out getting pressure with only four. Steve, about 11.40 to go in the first quarter. Uh, Wilton Spade hits Khalid Hill, who has turned into one of your favorite players, for about a 15-yard pickup, thanks to some nice play design from Car- Coach Harbaugh and his staff. Yeah, it's a third and three, and I think they've, they've probably watched film enough on Penn State to know that they're going to be uh, bringing a little bit of pressure and, and being some type of man coverage. And, and what they do a nice job of is Darbo's up top. He's going to take a minus split, which just means he's going to uh, normally he'll be on or around the numbers. He's a couple yards inside. They've offset Hill, and what they're going to do is get him to the flat and run Darbo inside and, and basically have an opportunity to pick off any guy that has uh, uh, Hill in man coverage. So, again, it's, it's going to do a little bit of play action, uh, sneak him out into the flat, and he's, he's really uncovered. And I think they end up blowing the coverage here, but even if they don't, uh, they're in poor position to cover Hill in the flat. And then uh, Smith does a nice job of picking up the pressure. Uh, get the pass off and end up getting a nice first down out of it. And the thing, too, is Darbo never makes contact. If he would have made contact before the ball would have been thrown, it would have been an inter- offensive pass interference. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. He's got the right of way in terms of running an inside route. And then once, once uh, he approaches any uh, opposing player, he's going to have to give ground. But the nice thing is he, he takes it, nobody comes out to take him, and, and he's in good shape. And all, all he really wants to do is just get body position make the guy avoid him uh, but again they, I think they blow the coverage here and, and it, it's all based on scheme it's third and three uh, no they're going to get a man scheme and, and, and well designed play Steve 732 to go in the first quarter at fourth and five for Penn State they're trying to establish some early momentum and they, they, they throw the ball at Jordan Lewis and Jordan Lewis in his first game back from injury shows what made, what made him an All-American a year ago yeah it's nice and uh, you know the we're, we're still in a critical point in this game. They, they have the ball on our side of the field and, and trying to gain some momentum. Uh, but special players make special plays. And this is, you can design all the plays you want in the world, but to have a, a player like Lewis back, uh, who's going to get his man, they're essentially just playing a man free with pressure. His man's going to show a screen right away, and it's without hesitation. He pulls the trigger and he gets up and, and, and makes a great tackle on the player. And uh, uh, this is a great turnover for Michigan and, and nice uh, field position going the other way. Steve, about the 240 mark of the first quarter, and, and Michigan has a well-designed uh, disguise along the defensive line here, confusing Penn State maybe on who's coming and who's not, and it leads to a Chase Winovich sack. Yeah, it's a nice job. They're going to show a six-man pressure, and uh, really what, at that point what it makes them do is declare their uh, protection. And really the nice thing, and we mentioned this earlier in the, in the uh, production, is you know, getting able to pressure with only bringing four guys. And they're going to show six guys, three on each. Uh, they're going to get this, the protection slide to the field, and we're going to uh, end up sending a four-man rush and end up getting a sack with a nice uh, twist by uh, Winovich coming inside. And, again, this is nice because we're only bringing four to the pressure, and then we're able to play man coverage and have a couple of rats underneath. But uh, a nice design scheme where they get really three on three, uh, throw a twist in there, and it's just a really difficult thing for uh, offensive linemen to pick up. And, and again, we get a nice sack and uh, force, him, force another punt. Steve, our final play of the first quarter, and, and Michigan has run a lot of jet sweeps, and they know that Penn State has been vulnerable to the jet sweeps, and so here they fake a jet sweep to Jabril Peppers, and it opens up, uh, and with some great offensive line blocking, it opens up a huge hole for Davion Smith. Yeah, it, it, Anytime you bring Peppers into the game, teams are going to know about them. And like you said, they've, they've made a lot of uh, headway with this jet sweep over the course of the season. And uh, you're going to see a couple guys jump out of the screen uh, up top and just try to uh, anticipate that a little bit. And what it does is uh, it gives us a little bit more room inside, which we're always looking for. And like you said, the guys inside did a great job of blocking. Mason Cole gets on the second level. And uh, you're going to get Smith about eight yards where he's, where he's untouched. Nice, nice big holes. And then he just does a great job of putting move on the safety and then just 
continuing to run hard downfield and uh, really show his, his toughness, but also his athletic ability, which I think is, is uh, often overlooked with him. But it's a really nice designed run again with uh, sort of faking it there with, uh, with Peppers and then just opening up the inside and, and really good execution offensively. Steve, uh, about 12.55 uh, to go in the second quarter. And Michigan has some, some good coverage here, and it leads to a – I mean, sometimes you'd say this is a coverage sack. At the same time, Chris Wormley is getting to the quarterback pretty quickly. Yeah, so, uh, you know, the nice thing they do here, they have three DS on the field. So we've got the chance to get Gary, we get Wormley, we get Charlton all out there together. We have some of your three best pass rushers uh, taking one of the tackles out. And, again, it's just a, a, another way it's, we're getting a four-man pressure. We're going to play uh, essentially a man combination on the receiver, so we get doubles on two of the receivers, and there's really nowhere to, to, to throw the ball to the quarterback. And the nice thing is we get really good push, and when you have a guy like Wormley lined up inside, a little bit quicker on those twist moves that they get, and uh, able to get into the quarterback's face after nice edge pressure from uh, uh, Charlton and uh, Gary. So uh, another nice team where you're really solid in coverage and only having to sacrifice four guys in the rush, and, and coming up with the sack is big time. 10.20 to go in the second quarter, Steve, and Michigan pulls out a surprise that Penn State probably was not prepared for at all, and that is Wilton Spate running the zone read with Ty Isaac. Yeah, I think, you know, nothing that we've seen this at all this year, and I, you know, anytime you have a, a, you know, a quarterback like we've got right now and nothing against him, but he's a pocket passer, and I think we come out with a, in a shotgun set with an offset back, the last thing those guys are thinking is any type of a zone read. So I think that works in our favor right off the bat. Again, it's nothing that we've shown all this year. Uh, we get nice blocking on the inside, and, and whether they're reading this or not, uh, Isaac gets a chance to, to in the open field and, and bust it outside for a good uh, 11, uh, you know, 11 yard run and uh, first down. So a nice job of, of utilizing different schemes uh, that really this, this young Penn State defense hasn't really seen before. Steve, uh, 750 to go in the second quarter, third and one. And Michigan brings a full run blitz, and it really stuffs this play for Penn State. Yeah, I think this is another uh, instance of Don Brown and, and what he what he's brought to the table in terms of his aggressiveness and, and uh, bringing pressure. And a lot of times when you think pressure, you're thinking pass pressure. And this is a, uh, a nicely designed run pressure where you're going to fill all the inside gaps and uh, you're going to be able to spill everything out. And you have an un- unaccounted uh, player in Peppers up at the top if the quarterback does want to pull it. But uh, Hurst inside, and then a nice job by McCray of really attacking that gap. Uh, the penetration kills the play. And, uh, again, it's it's not necessarily what you think of when you think of pressure. You're thinking a little bit more pass pressure. Uh, but an outstanding job on third and one to run pressure and get a tackle for loss and, and force the fourth down. 3.20 to go in the first half, and unfortunately this play doesn't end up counting. It's too bad because Davion Smith actually makes a nice play, as you're going to describe here. And Wilton Spade, for all the question marks about his arm strength, he makes a phenomenal throw across, uh, essentially across his body, setting his feet, and takes a lick and doesn't doesn't even care because he wants to make, he wants to throw the touchdown pass. Yeah, this is nice. And right off the bat, you know, and you mentioned we're gonna, uh, uh, Smith's going to get a holding penalty here, but you got to give props to the kid because he's actually supposed, this is supposed to be a run play action fake up top uh, to the split inside. And what he sees is uh, Penn State's going to show a five man pressure and they're going to bring a guy off the edge. And he's a senior, he knows the protection, and, and he's really unaccounted for. And uh, Spate's going to get a lick a lot earlier than he does if he doesn't come out of the, the run fake and actually pick up the protection. So, a really nice job by him. Uh, doing that initially. And then Spate just does a nice job and is able to escape out. And, uh, you know, he's, he's going to be running uh, away from his throwing arm, sets his feet, knowing he's going to get licked, and, and throws the ball about 45 yards on target to Darbar up in the field. So uh, it, it speaks to his athleticism. And like you said, uh, Michael, it speaks to his toughness because he stands in there. He knows he's going to take a shot by a couple of guys, and he, and he fires one in there anyway. And, uh, that's the mark of a great quarterback, and I, I, I think he's making each and every week and uh, just going to continue to get better. 12.55 to go in the third quarter and uh, they, they try to get a, a guy isolated out in the flat and maybe a one-on-one situation where he can beat just one Michigan defender. Unfortunately, Michigan's defense is too smart for that and has three Michigan defenders waiting for him. Yeah, they know we're in some type of man coverage and, and you know we play a lot of that and, and this is a really a man-beating type route where they're trying to 
swing the back out and then end up getting blocks on the guys that have covered inside. But Michigan did a combination coverage up top with the corner and the safety. You're going to see Stribling. Uh, they're anticipating running Stribling off with his man, and, and he's going to cut him loose to the safety who's giving them inside help. And uh, Stribling's going to be able to come up and attack the, the, the play from outside in. Uh, you've got uh, Charlton, who's actually lined up at the nose. Again, a nice uh, opportunity to have a, a big athletic guy in there at the nose guard who's going to sniff this thing out from that position as well. And then McCray uh, does a nice job forcing the issue with the block. So you get three guys out there on one. Uh, it's a play designed to beat man coverage, but Michigan's got the upper hand here uh, playing a man coverage that they're able to pass this route off and uh, get enough guys out there in the flat. So, uh, again, we're an opportunity where scheme uh, beats their design, and then you have players out there making plays. Steve, about 3.10 to go in the third quarter, and uh, it wasn't all the Davion Smith show or all the Ty Isaac show. Michigan got a lot of backs involved. Here, Karan Higdon, and here, uh, as you point out, a nice play by Jake Budd adjusting to what Penn State's doing and moving on from the guy he's supposed to block to an open uh, guy to block. Yeah, initially you're going to see uh, a bubble really between Kalis and Magnuson, and that's what what Pogue's thinking he's going to run through. They're going to end up isolating a linebacker. Uh, and they're going to come. They're going to double team out on this end. What happens is they're going to get a little bit of a line stunt from the defensive end, and uh, uh, Bud and Magnuson do a nice job of washing that down. And then uh, Bud's going to get up on the second level to a linebacker, and then Hoagie's going to adjust to being patient. He's going to get outside and really going to get two hats on to one. And then it just gives uh, uh, enough daylight there where Higgins going to pop through and does a nice job of finding the hole and bursting up and uh, getting about 11 yards here. So a really nice. Uh, hard run, but a really nice job by the guys up front adjusting to uh, the line formation that uh, that Penn State throws at a good adjustment on the fly. 14-18 of the, of the fourth quarter, and uh, some nice scheme here by Michigan. Freeze Ben Gedeon for a run blitz that he gets into the into the backfield just as Saquon Barkley is even getting the handoff. Yeah, they're going to try to run just a simple zone read here, and, and what Michigan's going to do is just uh, uh, gap exchange blitz with Gideon and with Hurst inside. Hurst is going to go down the A gap, Gideon's going to run through the B gap. And really the key to this is holding the disguise of the pressure. You know, if he starts walking up or starts tiptoeing or, or leaning forward, the guard and center have an opportunity to, to say, hey, we, we, we know uh, Hurst is going to come inside and they can end up passing off. So he does a nice job of holding the blitz till the snap is, is gone. And then runs through, and by that time, uh, there's no chance in, in adjusting to that. He's going to get through and get tackled for a loss. And then, uh, you know, the guys inside just get a great push, and we're covered up within a pitch on the quarterbacks of the field. There's just absolutely no where to run the football. And it's really an opportunity where, where Michigan, again, is going to run blitz um, uh, the formation and, and stymie what they're trying to do. Steve, 6.15 to go in the fourth quarter. Michigan uh, ran a lot of draws on Saturday. And people are asking, this particular play is a 40-yard touchdown run. Why were the draws successful? Why did What did maybe Michigan notice in, in Penn State that they decided to run so many of them? Well, I think if you look back over the course of the season, the draw play hasn't been a big thing for them. And I think that's the first thing. You, you want to kind of cycle some stuff in there that, that teams haven't seen before. And uh, particularly in these type of situations where you can actually hit, knock them off guard a little bit and, uh, and trigger for some play. So they're going to start an empty here and, and Higgins can come back into the backfield. And uh, I think the, the key factor here is, is that when they run this particular draw, you see uh, space open to the field, you're actually going to see the, the running back step away. So as a linebacker, you're taught any time the back and quarterback step away, I can, I can actually start my drop and get into coverage. If they were ever to quarterback opens to the back, then you kind of have to, uh, to hold your ground and clear that draw. So the fact that they, they changed it up a little bit, uh, and essentially have the quarterback and, and running back opposite initially. It's going to freeze those linebackers just enough uh, to get the guys downfield, uh, the linemen downfield the block, and, and get some space for Higgins to run through it. And, you know, after that 10-yard mark, that he's got a one-on-one with the safety, he gets a nice little move inside and, and beats him outside, and, and he's home free. So uh, just a, a slight little change up there with the quarterback and the, and the back being on a, a different uh, side initially is enough to freeze those linebackers and create some separation. Uh, in terms of levels between the D-line and the linebackers. Steve, our final play of this uh, Week 4 victory over Penn State, 6-11 to go in the fourth quarter. A really nice play by Maurice Hurst, who has has graded out consistently as one of Michigan's best defensive linemen. Yeah, and the nice thing here is we're going to bring pressure from the top of the screen, from the boundary. And and as a coach, anytime you bring outside pressure from one side, the, the big 
biggest concern you have is containing it to the opposite side. You know, with the concept of, uh, you know, the quarterback, running back, whoever it may be, sees pressure from one side, going to try to escape to the other. And typically what you'll have is the offense or the defensive line. Everybody's moving away from that pressure side. What Michigan does here, uh, which is a nice change that would actually help us get a tackle for loss, they're actually going to twist their, their guys away from the pressure. So you're going to see Vinovich uh, come inside and Hurst is going to uh, bull rush on his, his center for a second, then he's going to loop outside for contain and uh, ultimately he's unaccounted for when they throw this little uh, screen play. And, and for them to put that much uh, on their big guys inside speaks volumes to uh, a, how, how they're teaching them to, to read out plays, but also uh, of his athletic ability. And it's nice to see him uh, get a big tackle for loss here on a, on a big play on a screen. And, and again, it's just one of those changes, those slight little things that Michigan's defense are doing differently because their talent allows them and they have some good coaching that uh, these kind of plays are made because you just don't see that uh, that type of scheme from a lot of uh, teams out there. All right, well, thanks for joining us for this week's edition of Football 101 with Steve Morrison.